Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back! Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere! <laughs> Boost! <laughs> Peekaboo, I see you, because I'm, yes me, I'm YouTube, M-I-C, see you real soon, K-E-Y, why? Because we love you, M-O-U-S-C. Mickey Mouse Club. Do you remember that from back in the day? I don't know why that just entered my head. M O U. I was trying to sit here and figure out how I could do it with drama class, and I was like, drama class, eh? Because <laughs> A is for apples. Class? S? S? I guess. Yes, I tried to, and I'm out of luck. Anyway, I couldn't figure out a way to do it. So, anyway, I'm YouTube famous now. Na, 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 na. There's no business like YouTube business, like no business I know. Na, 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 na. Beauty gurus getting into trouble. Tana never making a video. Who else can I call out? Jake and Logan Paul moving away. I hope we never have to see them again. Beast. Anyway, there's a little bit of the drama opera of uh, 2020. Jack, Jeffree Star, Jacqueline Hill, Manny Mue, Nikki Tutorials. Hey, Laura. <laughs> hey, Laura. Woo, I lost my mind today. Okay, listen. Listen, people. And don't be calling people people because it's rude, okay? You don't do that, okay? So, people of drama class with students, <laughs> students, do you have your number two pencil? Do you have your trapper keeper? Okay, do you have your big yellow, a, a pink uh, eraser? <laughs> Not that, but I heard it was big and pink. Anyway, all right, so you're all ready, okay? You got your little a box where you keep all your pens and pencils in it. That was my favorite thing in school. We're going to take notes today, okay? And there will be a test at the end, and it will be Scantron, okay? So don't, like Peter Mon, forget to put your name on the Scantron test or you'll get a big zero, okay? That would be me. I'd be at the very, okay? I always took a book with me to class so that, because, you know, I love to read. So imagine Peter, okay, like seventh grade, Scantron test. <laughs> I thought I was prepared and ready for the test, of which I got an F on. And I would sit there and I'd have my book, Jackie Collins Lucky, or something like that. Because I thought I was her, okay? I did. I thought I was Lucky Santangelo all day long. But I wasn't. But I thought I was in my own fantasy, you know? So anyway, I'd be sitting there and I would just like on the Scantron test, I basically thought it was like, uh, you know, paint by numbers. And I'd just be like, do 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 and go turn in my test. I was always the first one done, right? And so at the end of class, the teacher, I thought she had graded them already. I didn't realize for a real long time that you had to run those scan Scantron tests through a machine. I didn't know. So I thought she was already to congratulate me on my A+, plus that I got on the Scantron test, you know? So at the end of class, she'd be like, Peter, can I talk to you for a second before you leave? And I'd be over there reading my Lucky Santangelo, you know? Lucky Waltz. Walt. Here I was in sixth grade, you know? Lucky waltzed through uh, the casino with $200 in uh, casino cash just falling out of her pockets while she was smoking a long black cigarette. And I'd be like, oh, that's going to be so mean one of these days. <laughs> True story it is, though. But anyway, so I was like, all I was like, why does the teacher want to talk to me? I must have got an A+. Plus. And I went up there at the end of class. You know what I mean? She said, you forgot to put your name on the Scantron test. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, my Lord. And then I'd get it back, you know, which I wish I kind of hadn't put my name on the Scantron test. And every Every time I just failed that so bad, but you know what? I'd always be like this. You know what? Let me tell you, okay, this is the truth of the nature all day long. No, seriously, I really do believe in academics. And if you know my story, I got almost a 4-0 in graduate school. I did very, very well. I think I got a 4-0 in graduate school. I did very, very well, and I do believe in the, the importance of academics. But I have to tell you, I do remember those Jackie Collins novels more than I remember what was in any of those foolish tests back in the day. <laughs> Oh my God, I read so many good books at the end of tests. But anyway, do you remember when you had to take those state tests and it would always be like, I would do, I don't know who I'm talking to. Am I talking to you? Who am I talking to? <laughs> Hi, Judy, how are you? I, whoever you 
are out there, if you are sitting, look around. Are you all by yourself? I'm talking to you. I'm talking. I'm talking to you. And I hope that you're having a really great day. And I, if you're not having a good day, well, F this day. And I hope tomorrow's much better. And it will be because, you listen, good times are right around the corner. Okay? I know you don't believe it. I know it's hard to believe it. And when I've been going through some tough times, my mom back in the day, true story, she would be like having a really sad day. And so she would go and she would rent some funny m movie, you know, like Caddyshack. She loved that movie, Caddyshack, back in the day, or Meatballs or something like that. She loved all those Saturday Night Live people, you know? So she would watch that. And she was so mad this one time. Do you guys remember when grocery stores used to have VCR rentals? So she would go to the Marsh or the Kroger grocery store and she would, you know, rent a movie. And she went in there one night. She was real depressed. And I think this is when, uh, like, she was still drinking and stuff. This was before my mom got sober. And she got a bottle of wine and uh, two martinis for two that came in a little can. And she said to the guy that worked at the, the video rental store, she said, um, yeah, can you tell me something really funny to rent? Because I like, I need just to be, you know, I need to laugh and whatever. And uh, somebody on my uh, Twitter today, they said, can you just tell us a story from your life? So here's a story from my life. Okay. So they, he recommended that my mom should rent Men Don't Leave by Jessica Lange. And if you don't know the story of this movie, I think it's like the husband dies or he leaves Jessica Lang, and she and her kids have to leave their house they've lived in all their life and go move to this little crappy apartment in the city. Do you remember it? My mom was so thrown out. Let me just tell you something, okay? And my mother, listen, she, she was loud and she was proud, okay? And she went into that video store the next day and she told him something about himself that I'm sure he will never forget and probably hasn't to this day, okay? She said, you are a horrible, horrible, horrible person. She said, why would you do that to me? She was so upset. So anyway, I digress. Okay, I've talked about so many things. I can't believe that I haven't worked my good Jitty Misty who was giving $2 BJs up in the bathroom in school. It doesn't matter. I've told this story a million times and she thinks it's so funny. And she's like, oh, well, that is true. I did. But she's like, it doesn't really matter. Because today, true story, she met her husband. She went to Indiana University, and then she did that Up With People. You know what that means? It's that Christian organization. They go around in the world, and they sing little songs, you know, like, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. But her song should go a little bit different like this, okay? I don't know. I'm going to have to make this up as I go. I used to give two dollar BJs. Now I'm driving a Range Rover, living in the suburbs, raising my kids, happy with my husband. That's how her song should go, because that's the truth of nature all day long. She did. She went around the world. She got to travel around the Role like she was, you know, with Lady Gaga on the dance crew or something, and with that up with people and talking to people about Jesus and all this kind of stuff. Jesus worked just great for her in her life, and then she came back, and her husband's family had so much money, who knew? And then she got married, and she got her kids, and she's living in some million, half million dollar house in the suburbs. She drives herself a Range Rover, she don't work nothing, okay? She got Chanel purses flying out of her car left and right. So anyway, Misty, you know who you are. Her name's not really Misty, but Misty, you know I love you, girl. Give me a call. So anyway, she watches my videos from time to time. All right, let's go into, I just wanted to do a fun little video over here today, okay? Did you, did you get that? I put out, what do you guys want me to talk about today? And what was so funny was, I started getting all these responses from people that had like, literally, this is where everybody's like, sign off from the video. There's no drama, no, there's no, it, unless it comes up in a question, we'll see. But so many people were like, talk about this, or talk, it was all these things that were so random. I was like, okay, I can do this video, this will be fun. So anyway, I need to get like a really, a, like a really sad thumbnail. How do I, <laughs> do you know when people like, it's like, they'll do some, <laughs> I can't even do it. I just want to do the glamour shots. <laughs> if I put the fan in it, people know. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about, though? I can't even do a good thumbnail of it. When people are like, like, here, I'll do it. Like, like we need it. I'm going to put it, I'll call it addressing the comments. Okay, remember that it was at 901. <laughs> assistant, assistant. <laughs> Boo, Tucker, where's the dogs? I need my assistance. But remember that, okay? Nine minutes and one... <laughs> I can't even fake it. I'm in such a good mood today. I can't. I'm, no, I'm nobody's actor. I'm not, okay? Although if Ryan Phillip, is that his name? No, that's, uh, <laughs> that's the actor that was in all those movies back in the day. I don't think he was very nice to uh, uh, Renee Zell, not Renee Zell. God, I, I'm losing my mind. I've become my grandma, my, my dad's mom. Not my other grandma. 
My mom's mom, she went to prison. She was an OG. She went to prison not once, but twice. My cousin found, and I found out for embezzlement. Can you even believe it? But anyway, uh, my other grandma, she would forget people's names. She calls like, I have like 10 cousins or probably 30 cousins. I don't know. My dad's the youngest of five. And she would, like, if you call her, she'd call you all kinds of names. And she even had a dog named Pepper at one time. And so Pepper always came before Peter. So by the time she went through all 30 grandkids and she was talking to me, you know, she'd be like, you know, <laughs> Judy, Jenny, Johnny, Judy, Judy, da, 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 da. And then she'd say, Pepper Peter. <laughs> and then that would be me. You know, I forget people's names. So anyway, Ryan Murphy is the director I'm talking about. If he's looking to cast somebody, I'm your person, okay? People think I'm like Leslie Jordan anyway. I could be his under, understudy, right? But Ryan Philippe is who I'm talking about that I used to think was so good looking back in the day. Did you ever see that scene when he was working out in the gym and he came out in the towel? You all know what I'm talking about? In that movie, I Know What You Did Last Summer, okay? But he was married to Reese Witherspoon, who I absolutely adore and I love her. She was the one uh, that played June Carter Cash. Remember that? And I Walked the Line. I Walked the Line. And I do, too. I do. I do. Do you walk the line? I walk the line. But anyway. But anyway. And she came out and she said, like, and when she won her Oscar for it, you know, she said, just like Jean Carter Cash, I say to myself every day, just trying to pay the rent. You know, like, just we're just trying to get by. That's what it is. And that's when you know, like, you're a real human being is you're just trying to get by in life. Are you trying to get by? Well, aren't we all just trying to get by? Like, in all seriousness, no jokes aside, right? Like, if you lay your head on the pillow tonight, okay, and you haven't hurt anybody's feelings and you've made it through the day and maybe you've done a little bit of good work out there in the world and you've been a nice person, you know what? You did your best, didn't you? Like, pat yourself on the back for that and say, hey, you know what? I did my best today and tomorrow I'm going to get up and I'm going to try to do my best tomorrow. We put our best days together one after another and that's called a good life, right? So, anyway. All right. Let's get into what I had to say today. People are like, is this the intro? I'm so confused. What's going on? No, it's just this is all part of the video today, okay? Actually, on my Peter Dustiff channel, I've decided what I think I'm going to do is, you know on my vlog channel, it's called Peter Vlogs. I vlog for like an hour to an hour and a half every night or every day. I think that I'm going to make my Peter Dustiff channel like a traditional vlog channel where like I do 10 to 20 minute videos and it's literally me just showing my day whenever I want to do it. Not, there, it's not going to be every day, okay? But like I'll still do do stuff because it's Peter does stuff, you know, but it's going to be like also like me just kind of like walking around and being like, hey, what do you think about dog beds or something like that, you know? Because I'm loving that channel over there and thank you guys for following it. I appreciate it. So I said, what should I talk about today? Let's go through here and I'm going to respond I'm going to address all of the comments, all the surly comments. Um, so Lisa said, hi, Peter. Hope you're doing well. I'd like to know if you could do a YouTube video with anyone, who would it be? Can't wait for your videos today. They honestly help me so much and cheer me up. Love you. Boost. Hey, Lisa. If I could do a video with anybody, who would it be? Um, oh, with anybody, who would it be? You know, that's a hard question. Okay, so for a long time, if you guys know, there's a channel called uh, Nick and Poncho. Nick just recently got a new rescue dog. Poncho passed away, um, I think, two months after Pee Pee died. We had a chihuahua named Pee Pee, um, and we still miss him every single day and talk about him. And uh, uh, Poncho, Nick's little dog, was, um, they're from Italy, and he was um, a little chihuahua as well. And it had always been my dream to have... Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Poncho and PP together in like a little video. I don't know. You know, back in the day when I started, I really thought it would be so much fun to do collabs and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, I would die if I collabed with this person. I'd die if I met with this person. But you know what really happened was that the veil of YouTube was kind of lifted away. And I really honestly, and you guys know this because I've talked a lot about this in relation to drama videos in the last couple months. It's like the times I would talk to people or the times that I would interact with people, and I really try to limit it now. Like, if I talk to somebody, I try to make it somebody that I'm not going to be doing a video about. Um, I don't want those kind of relationships with any of those people. Um, those people, like your mom said about your friends in high school, you know. My mom, I had this one friend, and she would always say that. Like, let's just say her name was Judy. She'd say, that Judy. She, I knew she didn't like Judy. You know what I mean? My mom thought that Judy was responsible for all of the things that I had gotten in trouble for. And you know what? I let her think it, too. Because it was better if Judy was a bad friend. And then I'd go out there, and my mom would be like, you're not going and hanging out with that Judy, are you? And I'd be like, no, mom, I'm going to 
the library. I wasn't going to no library. I was going to smoke club cigarettes with that Judy. You know what I mean? She was my ride or die. I love her. I still love her to this day. But anyway, uh, so <laughs> she's not that. She's not a troublemaker today. She's a very polished person. I mean, we're not that close, but when I talk to her, I love her to this day, you know? So anyway, what was I saying about that? Oh, who would I would collab with? I don't know, you know? Like, I think it would be fun to do a video with um, B, uh, Lucille, from uh, the tarot card reader. I love her. I think she's sweet. Amphrodite, I would love to do a video with. But he and I are good friends, so um, I love Ant. And, um, like, a, that kind of video. I don't know. There's not really... Tons of people out there that, uh, I mean, I'm open to, you know, anything. Um, you know, honestly, there, so I'm going to put his channel below. There's a guy named Michael, and he did this video for me. It was like a series, um, and it was called the Peter Mon Vlog Challenge. And it was 14 days of him vlogging. He wore a hat that said the Peter Mon Vlog Challenge. He drove around. He lives in Indianapolis. And we've been mean, meaning to get together for coffee or lunch um, and do some kind of video. And he is probably who I would, number one, love to do some kind of video with because um, he just, I mean, that's the kindness for me that, like, is just so cool. And I love his vlogs. I watch his vlogs every single night. He is still vlogging every single day. So I will link his channel below. Go check him out. And the other person actually lives here in Indianapolis, too, and that is um, Wes from Highfalutin Carb. And Wes is probably the YouTuber that I talk to the most. Um, he is super, super nice, super, super friendly. I mean, we don't talk about any kind of drama because he doesn't care about any of that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? We talk about food. We talk about just life in general. And um, he's another person that I would love to do a video with at some point. So probably those two people. But just because I really like them and I would like to meet them. You know what I mean? In person. Not because, like, I don't know. The days of me doing, like, old school YouTube. and I, I had fun when I did it. And I'm extremely thankful to everybody that welcomed me in their home and allowed me to do videos with them. But I think that was a period of YouTube for me that is come and gone. I don't want to live in LA. I don't have any desire to be part of all of that. Um, it makes, I want to stand on the outside and still allow the illusion to be true on YouTube. Once I started seeing these people and kind of really their motives and who they were behind the scenes, it just became very sad to me. And I thought, yet again, here's something in my life that I've gotten excited about, that I've seen the truth behind the veil. And once you see those people for what they really are, um, <clears throat> you know, I don't know. I have to tell you, and like, I'm not like really, I'm a person that I'm very trusting and I give, um, I give, you know, second and fifth and ninth chances to people. I really, really do. But when you are a liar to my face and I find about it out about it later, I'm literally done, like done. Like I, you would really have to come and sit down and, and take a total accountability to me and be like, you know, this is why and blah, 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 whatever. The fact that I found out that Shane Dawson talked about me horribly, okay, to somebody behind the scenes, and I heard the voice messages, and they were horrible, what he said about me. Absolutely ruthless, okay? To then find out that he had no problem sitting down with me and basically shining me on, knowing that he had said that stuff about me, <clears throat> and I'm sure that wasn't the only person he had said it to. You know, in retrospect now, me trying to set up some collabs were difficult, and I'm wondering, was that because Shane had said things to these people, you know? That it would get to a certain point, and then there would be like, they'd just be like, no, I'm gonna let it go. And I have to think, in retrospect, that Shane Dawson stood in the way of a lot of that. And that's fine. You know, I'm a believer that my journey takes me where it's supposed to be. But had I known what he had said to me before, if five minutes before that meeting, the person that sent me those voice messages, Charles Gross, had sent them to me then, I would have looked at Shane and I would say, how dare you sit right here to my face and act like you've never talked behind my back? Do you want to explain this to me? Because I'm a 48-year-old man, and those are the conversations I have with people today. I'm not, I don't, I'm not a game player, okay? That's why I like staying over here in my lane on YouTube. Let me do my thing, okay? I don't want the facade of the people that I look up to and I like to be broken for me again. And, um... Uh, that's where people are like, could Shane Dawson do anything? Where you know he's a phony. Shane Dawson is a phony to me. Okay, and when I look at that based on that one experience that I had with him, it makes me wonder how much of what Shane Dawson has done for 12 years on YouTube is complete fraud and phony. And I think probably 99% of it. And that's where I base my judgment on somebody. You know when people say, 
I don't base my opinion on somebody until I've interacted with them. Well, I have interacted with that man, and that's what he sh showed me who he is. And when somebody shows you who they are, believe them because they know themselves much better than they do, or than you do. And I believe everything that he ever showed me. And that's all I got to say. But you know, that's why I don't really want to collab with a lot of people. That I want to collab with people that are just normal, that are doing this because they love it. Because I love YouTube, and I'm not out here trying to figure out all of this kind of stuff. You know, it's like. You know, or being Gabby Hanna and trying to be on TikTok and push the algorithm and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, and the reality that's really sad is the majority of the drama channels that I've ever interacted with, and I have to tell you, I've interacted with all of them at one point or another. We are just people that love YouTube. I mean, that's really at the end of the day what it is, is that we're people that just watch this and, it, and we get excited about it. And we have theories about it and whatever, you know, and if you really want to look at what's happened in the last couple of years, because people come so hard for drama channels, we've been used and spit out like crazy. And that's okay. I knew that going into it, you know, and I think that we all know that to some degree, right? But baby, we're still here. We're still here. We're still here. So anyway, thank you for that question. Woo, that was one. I only got through one. Okay, let's address some more of the comments. Uh, Jewel said, you can honestly talk about anything and I'll be listening. Oh, thank you. Lynn said, hope you're having a great day. Talk about the fact that we hit 70 in Indy today. It's beautiful outside. Ra, 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 ma, ma. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hmm. So... A positive take on how some of the beauty community has grown, like Manny and Lunar Beauty and Laura Lee and starting her a new clothing line, Raw Beauty Christie, just everything, baby. Call I, 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 okay. I just talked about this in my last video. I talked about Laura Lee and Manny, and I didn't talk about Raw Beauty Christie, but I think people know I love Christie. I absolutely adore Christie. You know, the reality is, as a drama ch channel, and I know people don't get this, if I every day did videos about all the positivity in the beauty influencer community, nobody would. I mean, maybe a few people would watch them, but not most people, right? But I do think it's important, and that's why I try to shout out people that I feel like are positive and are, you know, uh, are making good choices today, you know? I, I have to tell you, I literally would reach out to Manny and Laura, and I'd say, hey, do you want to give me your opinion about this, or do you want to whatever? And they would always say, I would prefer not to get involved in the drama. They wouldn't say anything about anybody. They have never to this day, to this day, and I've had some pretty personal conversations with them, okay? To this day... And Jacqueline included has never once uttered those other James, Jeffrey, Shane, Tati, none of their names. And I've asked, nope, just leave us out of the drama. We just want to stay out of the drama. And they've and they've done that, and they've shown the progress that they've made as human beings and people. And hey, listen, we all screw up, okay? You know, I was talking about this in my last video. I said this a couple years ago, and somebody's like, I don't screw up and make mistakes. Well, good. You're a perfect human being, but the rest of us out there, we're not, you know? And, um, you know, I I'm holding on to see the change that's going to happen in these people, you know? And to see the growth that's going to happen on, a, on these YouTubers that have fallen from grace. Everybody loves a good comeback story. I I and I have to say, when other people grow, that's inspiration for me to grow as well, you know? I know it's corny and I don't care what anybody says. When Manny said, my my social blade may be in the red, but my life is in the green, my personal life is in the green, I loved that statement so much because what he was saying is, I love my career, I love what I do, I live a blessed life, okay? But I do not determine my success and my happiness based on my career anymore, I base it on my personal life. And you know what, I was at a period in my life too where I was really getting that and I was learning that and I, I'm so thankful that he came out and said it the way that he did. And I always remember that. You know, I, I love a good catchphrase. And I think that's a catchphrase that at the time that Manny was beat up about and people were like, that is so stupid. I think it's a great catchphrase. And I think that we should remember that, okay? Because, you know, Jeffree Star, his social blade, it ain't looking so good these days. It's in the red, okay? But could he say his personal life is in the green? I'm not sure, you know? Shane Dawson, his social blade's in the red. Could he say his personal life's in the green? I'm not so sure, you know? So the fact that Manny came out and he showed the growth that he is and that he and Laura continue to stay out of the trouble and continue to post videos, continue to get the views and continue to be representative of what they love, I think it's fantastic. And Raw Beauty Christie, good for her. Raw Beauty Christie is gonna be the person, I'm gonna tell you this right now, okay? She's gonna be the person 
that in three to five years is sitting at 10 million subscribers and she is literally dictating the new wave of the beauty community. The non-problematic beauty community, the person that can do exact, she is the example, okay, of the dream of you want to be a beauty influencer, do this, okay? And I'm not, I don't mean this as a put down when I say this, but Christy's just a normal girl, okay, that loved doing makeup, started in the beauty community and she has risen from that. And I'm going to tell you, she's going to continue to rise, okay? And she does what she wants and she dictates how she's going to do it. And she is somebody, I mean, she is somebody that I look to and I, as a role model. I think she is just one, one cool woman. I love her, you know? And, um, and she's always been very supportive of me. She has shouted out my Peterisms channel, which is so meaningful to me. And, um, and I think it's interesting that out of all of my channels she watches, that she watches that one where I'm reading meditations on how to grow as a person. There. That's, for me, all that I... Yet again, another example of when you when somebody shows you who they are. She's showing me who she is. You know, that she wants to grow as a human being. I mean, can we argue more than that about what a great person she is, you know? I really didn't think I was going to get into so many opinions on here today. So, yeah. Um, okay, Kylie said something positive. We could definitely use something good today. Um, okay, let's see. Let's see. I'm going through here. Beth said anything. I just love watching your videos every day. Oh, thank you. Uh, Marge said, Roll, your roller skating days are your favorite YouTubers that you watch. Well, I mean, my favorite YouTubers that I watch, I don't know. Like, um, I kind of go through, well, um, so my favorite shows, two shows that I watch, you guys, I love drag more than anybody will ever know. You know, I, when I came out, I came out into a drag culture in Indianapolis, Indiana, and used to go to drag shows Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, I went to my first pageant when I came out. It was National Entertainer of the Year. Shayla Simpson won. Um, my first internet, my first national pageant was 1993. That was my first uh, national pageant. That was Entertainer of the Year, and Shayla Simpson from Minneapolis won. Um, and um, I have watched drag pageants and drag shows forever. So I love anything to do with drag. My number one favorite show on YouTube is um, Drag Showdown. And it is an underground drag race that is run by Crystal Baldiva. She has ran it for years. She's on an all-star um, season right now. There are so many people on the show that are phenomenal. And you guys, these are younger kids. When they started, they were like in high school, but it's the all-star version now, so they're older. Um, and it's like, I mean, they're just unbelievable. You guys, some of the costumes and some of the things they put together are better than what you see on RuPaul's Drag Race. No lie. Okay, and these are kids that majority of them are in college or living at home with their parents, okay? I mean, there's... Uh, there's so many, I don't want to start saying their names because I'll say somebody that, um, I'll, I'll leave somebody out and I love all of them right now. I mean, I love Obscura, a phenomenal artist, okay? Artist, not even just a drag queen, you know? And there's Salem Olfax, Olfax which is just incredible. And Glass Stain, who is just so inspiring. And, um, who else? I want to, I, I don't want to leave anybody out because, um, I love uh, Chestnut, which just brought back. And, um, who is the one that brought Chestnut back? I can't remember. And Alice in Wonderland. I mean, there's just, you guys and Alice Noir and um oh who's the one um oh shoot oh god why can't I remember right now it's uh anyway um uh, oh shoot it's one of my favorites oh shoot she's so different this season than other seasons and she's so fantastic hold on one second I can't believe I could not remember it. I could literally see her in her bedroom sitting there talking to the camera and it's Ray of Sunshine. So anyway, um, Ray, you're one of my favorites from both of your seasons, so I can't believe that I forgot. But anyway, Drag Showdown is phenomenal and Crystal does it all on her own. Please go check it out. Please, please, please go check it out. And um, you can support her Patreon as well. Um, the other show that I love is um, Hey Queen by Johnny McGovern, and it is one of the most underrated shows on YouTube, and he interviews uh, Drag Race, RuPaul's Drag Race contestants, and he's interviewed a lot of other people too, Christine Sidelko and Elijah Daniel, and Shane Dawson, and Michelle Vis Visage, and RuPaul himself, and he's had so many people on there, and um, he's really the only person that's doing what he does. I mean, he literally has like every queen that's ever been on RuPaul's Drag Race, right? And he asks the hard hitting questions. And then my favorite part is, and late at night, he doesn't know this and he probably doesn't care, but late at night after I vlog, okay, and I'm listening to audiobooks, I'll pull into gas stations and I'll get a bag of sour cream and onion chips and some cheese. And I'll sit there with an orange juice and I'll sit in my car in the parking lot of the gas station and I'll catch up on the newest, look at her. And look at her is where he um, gives a contestant 
a contestant, a guest, a fan that says shade on it. And then they get to throw a little shade or tell some truth about these people. And um, it's a really good way to get to know the queens. And it gets emotional sometimes and whatever. And um, he had a co-host for a really long time who was a really big part of West Hollywood. And um, that was Lady Red Couture. And she passed away about six months ago. And I was just devastated when I found out that she had passed away. And I loved her so much. And I would watch and I would laugh. And they were such a huge part of my late night ritual. And I just want Johnny to know that I, I love him dearly. It's always been my dream to be um, on Hey Queen. And, um, and Lady Red Couture will forever be missed. So, anyway, those are my two favorite uh, YouTube shows that I watch. I don't really watch a lot of other YouTube. Um, I actually, it's so funny because I've been talking about asthma. <laughs> ASMR. I've been listening to some asthma recently, but like blizzards and rainstorms and things like that. Okay, so let's get into... This is kind of like a Q&A and I didn't expect it. I'm having so much fun. I love it. Okay. What spring planning do you plan on doing this year? Said um, Miss Peachy. Uh, love all your channels, Peter. They help keep this slightly aged lady sane. Well, I'm going to do... Um, I think we're going to do some uh, uh, bushes out back and some bushes on our front walk. And probably that, probably keep it a little simple, but I want all kinds of plants on my back patio. Okay, um, Anna said, wait a second. Um, Anna said, talk about how grilled cheese is superior to all foods because you uh, it can eat it for any meal. I love, I love grilled cheese. I love grilled cheese. It's like probably in my, one of my top five favorite foods. Well, I have different food groups. You know, like the food pyramid. The food pyramid for me is like breakfast food goes into one, gas station food's another. <laughs> I'm like the most unhealthy eater in the entire world. I know I need to get it into shape. I need to, <laughs> look at that hairdo. <laughs> Hairdo's for you! Anyway, um, I need to get into shape, seriously, but we've known that for a, a while. Brianna said, out of your latest reviews, which item has been your favorite? Oh, that's a good question. Out of my latest reviews, let's go see my favorite. Do, do, do. Let's go see what I've reviewed lately and see. Um, well, I can tell you that it wasn't this one that was a fail the other day. Oh, shoot. Hold on a second. Um, okay. What was it that I tried the other day? Star Starbucks, Starbucks Springtime Lemonade. That was horrible. Um, oh, the, the pink Starbucks refresher. That was really, really good, I would say. And also the McDonald's Oreo Mint uh, McFlurry was really, really good. Those would be the ones that I would definitely suggest. Okay. Uh, let's see. Just a few more of these. Rants are always good. Rants coming for soon. Katie, Drag Race, what are your thoughts on Snatch Game this season in general? Okay. Uh, well, I, I have some feelings about um, Candy Muse at the beginning of it. I'm starting to like her, and I know that they say, like, you know, Michelle and RuPaul say that the, the comment about editing is always BS, but I feel like Candy was kind of unfairly edited, maybe, at the beginning of the season, although, man, she picks some uh, problematic people, doesn't she? She was using Jeffree Star's makeup, and then she played Patrick Star, and horribly so, too. No offense, Candy, okay? Um, but Candy played a horrible Patrick Star. I mean, I don't really know how... I feel like Candy played Patrick Star the best that she could have played Can Patrick Star, but like I don't feel like Patrick Star has such an enigmatic personality that there would be a way to do it any different, you know? Um, I think Simone is absolutely, but I don't want to say this about Candy. I think Candy was played unfairly at the beginning of this uh, season. She's coming across as very sweet um, and very soft and supportive of the other queens, and I really like it. It's a likable look for Candy. So I think she came on the show being like, let me show, you know, that um, I can be tough and have a lot of catchphrases. And I don't know that I think it was necessarily a good look for her. Um, and I, I like her at a little softer. And some of her makeup and some of her outfits have been literally level couture. I mean, I, I just am, like, so impressed with them. Um, Simone is my absolute favorite. I want Simone to win all the way. Next to Simone, I like Utica a lot. Although, I don't really know what's going on. I felt like she was kind of put on the spot. Utica seems to have a lot of, like, social anxiety, maybe like I do. And I relate to that a lot. Like, when you're in a group of people, you don't really know how to act. That's, that's totally me. Um... But I think that Utica is just beyond creative. I didn't really like Rosé at first because um, it just was so like, look at me, I'm, I'm going to be the best in the entire world. And then Alex, my husband, and I were talking about her last night and we were like, she's so humble though. Like, we really like her now. And um, yeah, so, uh, and Denali is like so, I think, 
it's sad because I think in a different season, Denali would be shining bright, but I think there's so many personalities that Denali is kind of pushed to the back, but man, so creative, isn't it? There's my dog, not my dog, but my neighbor's dog in the backyard. I think Denali is fantastic. Who else is left? I can't remember. Olivia is okay. I'm, they're all talking about her being a diva, and I'm like, when is this diva moment gonna come out? So, yeah, Simone is my absolute favorite. I'm like all the way gunning for Simone to win, and just this week, if you haven't watched the Snatch game yet, her Snatch game was fantastic, but when she comes out on the runway, I mean, you guys, like, let's just, oh, oh, God, how could I forget Got Mick, James Charles, a uh, good friend. Got Mick, fantastic. Best Paris Hilton I've ever seen in my entire life and deserve to win. Um, yeah, so those are my thoughts. Um, and Simone's runway was just beyond. I mean, absolutely beyond. And I love that she said, this is not a moment, it's a movement. Um, and she is, they're, they're all very smart this season, but she is beyond smart. And I love her. Okay, let's just get a couple more on here. I'm having so much fun. Okay, uh, Jacqueline releasing her lips, re-releasing her lipsticks. I just talked about that. Um, well, let's talk about the magazine video or misconnections. I think about doing one of those soon because I haven't done one in a long time. Cecilia said, "Oh my God, you say my name in your last name, Cecilia. You're breaking my heart." Okay. Um, let's see. You should ask drama class what they would do if they painted Jeffrey Star, but don't like him anymore. Like I meant. Oh, okay, so I was like, what is she talking about? She's talking about this cameo. So she made a painting of Jeffree Star, and it's fantastic, right? So she really wants to know your comments in the comment section below. She made a painting of, of Jeffree Star. It's absolutely beautiful. It's absolutely fantastic. And, um, but she's like, I don't support him anymore. I don't like him. What should I do, you know? So I told her to send it to him or, you know, or keep it because it's a piece of her work and she should be proud of it. And, you know, hey, like who you want to like, you know. Um, and uh, I don't know. You guys tell her in the comment section below. Uh, that's from Renee. So, hey, Renee. Um, aliens, they exist. The census lady, she exists. <laughs> Why garlic bread is so good. I love garlic bread so much. Oh, my God. And David Dobrik, I'm done. So anyway, I can't anymore with the David Dobrik stuff. It's like, I almost kind of feel like the bigger you are on YouTube, the the more you get away with. You know what I mean? And I think it's it's sad. Um, because when you have that kind of power, there is responsibility that goes along with it. And they just don't seem to care. They don't, you know? And so, bottom line, it's just um, all about the money to them. And and I think that's very obvious in what they do. So, anyway, I had a fun time doing this video today. I think I'm going to do a QA. and a um, in like next week sometime I'll put it up on my Instagram so make sure that you're following my Instagram because I usually do my Q&A's over there I will do a drama filled Q&A and you guys can ask me whatever questions you want I'll probably film it over there I may not post it though for like a like couple weeks so anyway like a week or two but anyway uh, maybe next week maybe the week after that but make sure that you're following my Instagram because it'll be up over there and I love you guys so much and I will see you tomorrow bye